Hello there, YouTube. I am back with another speculation video on Totally Accurate Battle Simulator. Since my last video, there has been one new video released by Landfall on their official YouTube channel, and one new update to the game, both of which bring a whole lot of new content to the table. The first unit shown in the video, which is what I'm going to be covering first, is the Hawacha. This is a piece of Asian artillery, I believe most commonly associated with China. And it shoots these, uh, I believe, rocket-propelled arrow-like um, projectiles out at enemies. It looks like it does a lot of damage. This looks like it's going to be a very cool weapon, and it also looks like it might have the potential to reload after firing. Um, this was in the older versions of TABS before it was officially released. However, I believe it uh, destroyed itself once it fired once. Um, the next thing we're going to look at is a unit for the Renaissance faction, the Da Vinci tank. As you can see, the Da Vinci tank has gone through... Uh, quite a few uh, redesigns and changes since we've last seen it in tabs. It seems to be made of multiple different pieces of wood, or at least the wood is, seems to be different entities as it kind of moves around in the clip. In this image here, you can see that the cannons, which would be on the actual unit, have been replaced with broadswords. This is uh, to show off a function of the unit editor, and we'll get to uh, talking quite a bit more about that later. One thing I do wonder is if pieces of the tank will be able to break off during battle, or if it will just fall apart similarly to the catapults and ballistas. The next unit, and this is actually sort of about two units that we saw in this video, were one, another um, unit of the Ashigaru, or Straw Hat unit. I will probably be calling it the Straw Hat from now on. And as you can see, this unit is uh, somewhat different from the last time we saw a unit like this. This one seems to have a bit more of a robe type thing, and the Straw Hat does not have the brown pattern on it. Personally, I'm a bigger fan of the older design, but I think this one looks all right. The other unit we have is another Renaissance unit. It is the Renaissance Fencer. Fencer excuse me. Big baggy pants and a fun uh, fencing style make this unit very uh, original and creative, and I really like it. I think it harkens back somewhat to the days of older physics engines for tabs, where the physics seemed to be focused more on dueling. Um, personally, I think that the goofier, funnier, and all-around great atmosphere of tabs um, is more faithfully held by the current physics engine, which I think is doing a very good job, but it is kind of nice to have a unit that somewhat calls back to other days. However, I think the Fencer definitely stands on its own, with its somewhat slower and uh, very interesting fighting style, as well as his fun voice and feathered hat. Another unit for the Renaissance faction, three units for the Renaissance faction in total from this video, is the Renaissance Halberdsman. As you can see, the halberd's on the ground there, embedded into the Fencer. Um, he seems to be wearing some sort of padded jacket. One thing I think uh, is worth noting about this unit is that there is a lot of brown and tan on it, and not very much red. It's almost difficult to tell which faction this unit is a part of. Now, we have seen plenty of units that have colors that are not their primary color, featured fairly prominently on them, but I'm not sure if we've seen any as prominently as this. I think there is a good chance that, um, at the very least, the sleeves or the tan area will likely be changed to a different color by the end of the game, but that's just speculation. All in all, a lot of really good and interesting units in this video. Now let's move to everything that the update added and teased. First we see this, April 2019, new faction, Dynasty. This is similar to my prediction that the faction with the throwing star would be the Asian faction, not the Japanese or Chinese faction. Um, I think it's very interesting that this will include units from both, similarly to how the ancient faction includes both Roman and Greek inspired units, and potentially Macedonian inspired units if you count those Orissas. Although the Macedonians were somewhat Greek, there is some difference in there between Spartan Greeks, Athenian Greeks, and Macedonian Greeks. As you can see, the picture shows the large full moon and quite a few of the straw hat Ashigaru soldiers running across a bridge. This uh, image appears to be a little bit more Japanese inspired. One thing I find very interesting is that it looks like we will be getting this faction before the end of the month, month which is very exciting. I'm not sure how long it'll be as this new update added quite a bit and just dropped today. At the bottom it says, The Dynasty faction is making its entrance with new units, a cool new map, and campaign levels. Coming back, coming later this month. So it does look like we are going to be getting this one within a matter of weeks. And one thing I wonder, however, is are we only going to be getting one more map, or are we going to be getting multiple? I'm sure that maps take just as long of a time to make these units, if not a whole lot longer. And so one map would be fine. I hope we get something personally with a pagoda or something like that. But uh, we might have to wait longer to get multiple maps. I really hope that we can get a full set of two maps and a sandbox map for every faction, but we'll have to see. Some factions might just end up getting more love than others. And then, uh, also in this update, 
we got to see a roadmap of what's to come. All sorts of new features and cool new things. We got a full list of factions, well, almost full. As you can see, this picture is what appears to be concept art for the samurai unit. Personally, I don't think the actual samurai unit is going to look like this, although it does look very good. There is still a lot of exposed sort of skin of the figure, and I've noticed that in the um, final version of Tabs, most of the units have clothing on rather than um, having exposed sort of base model stuff, which I think is uh, personally a good choice. The factions listed in total are the um, tribal faction, the farmer faction, the medieval faction, the ancient faction, the Viking faction, newly, um, not currently in the game, the dynasty faction, the renaissance faction, the pirate faction, I guess this would be the Napoleonic faction, but it appears it is not going to be, and two unknown factions, which I will touch on later. Next, there's a part about maps. Looks like we're going to be getting quite a few new maps for both the campaign and potentially sandboxes, and I can't wait to see what those are. They look like they're going to be pretty incredible. And then finally, lots of new features. There are um, lots of things here about a new um, unit as well as faction editor, which I think is going to be a very cool and welcome addition to tabs and a good way for uh, the community to let some of their creativity show. One thing I wonder is if people will have the ability to create units or even entire factions and upload them to the Steam Workshop so that other people can download them. As you can see, it looks like there are pictures of different headgears and stuff like that in the unit creator um, display screen. And while I'm not sure if this is going to be the finished UI, this does look pretty good. As you can see, there are quite a few things. Um, most notably, there is an iron mask, uh, but appears to be potentially a beard or a cowboy bandana, and a renaissance painter-like hat, or potentially just the hat of nobility. Either way, those all look very cool. As you can see, there are some things that we can get to change. We can expect a change in clothes, the head, neck, shoulders, torso, arms, wrist, hands, waist, legs, and feet. Looks like we can also likely pick weapons, potentially different types of arms and legs, and as you can see, there's a way to set the stats. So it looks like we can increase the attack, defense, or speed of units. I wonder if that will change some form of cost meter based on an algorithm, or if we'll be able to set our own cost, which could lead to some truly overpowered units. Well, I do think that the uh, unit creator is very cool. I think it would be very cool if we could have ways that people could create wholly, unistic, wholly unique excuse me, props. Um, almost as if people could like combine multiple props and have them sort of clip through one another to get something new. I'm not sure if they'll actually add anything like this, or if we'll just get a very simple but fun unit editor. Either way, I think whatever it will be, it's probably going to be quite cool. So, um, I had said that there are two uh, currently mystery factions, just represented by question marks, that will be eventually coming to the game, currently not uh, displayed in the UI. Um, one of those is I think almost definitely going to be a modern warfare faction. We've seen a lot of units for that, um, and I think there's a good chance it'll make it into the game. Um, this uh, image is actually from last video, but as you can see, there are a few more faction icons. There is a bomb and a knife. I suspect that the bomb will be the modern warfare faction, and that could contain units like the mustard gas canisters, the flamethrower, a rifleman, potentially a machine gunner, and most likely the M1 Abrams tank as their hero unit. This could also be a chance to show off new mounting uh, mechanics, and I think that mounting will be a part of the unit creator, so that you'll be able to stack units on top of one another, although it'd be interesting if you could do this in the campaign. I know that more information about that will be coming later, but it'll be exciting to see what we get. One thing I am currently wondering about is if one of those two mystery factions will be a Napoleonic faction. Although a knife with a serrated edge doesn't really fit with Napoleonic, I do think that there's going to be a good chance that, since those units were so uh, impactful into the uh, original game, I think that there's a good chance they'll make a reappearance here, with likely updated and very cool designs. However, it is also possible that Napoleonic units could be part of the pirate faction. We could have some sort of pirate crewman, and then a cannon, and then the pirate captain, and perhaps a swashbuckler or something like that. And then we could also have the Napoleonic rifleman, um, and potentially even saber cavalry. So those two things could be combined as, like, Napoleonic sailors and pirates are often lumped together. Or they could be their own separate faction. Personally, I would prefer if they were separate factions, because then I think that the Napoleonic faction could be a bit de more detailed and have a better ability to stand on its own, but we will have to see what happens. I'm not entirely sure what the uh, serrated knife faction could be, or if that'll even be in the final game at all. But they could separate it into a historical semi-modern warfare, such as World Wars 1 and 2 looking units, and more modern units, um, such as the M1 Abrams tank and likely machine guns that we're going to be getting. 
the last thing I'd like to talk about is um, the things that this new update added, which are very cool. Despite a few small UI changes, such as a um, unit counter added to both sides, as well as um, little names popping up when you uh, select a different faction, uh, which is another way to tell that the new factions will be Dynasty, Renaissance, and Pirates. Three new units were added to the game, but not normally. Um, these three units can be unlocked by finding their weapons hidden throughout the maps, which just shows the cool and awesome detail of the maps and tabs, and how checking around them for secrets can really pay off. I'm not going to give away the specific location of these weapons that you're going to be finding, but they uh, look similar to the weapons pictured here, and they can be found in the Medieval 1, Medieval 2, and Ancient 1 maps. The three new units are the Executioner, a 350 gold cost axe unit, which I think is uh, pretty well worth its money. It does quite a bit of damage, um, and although a lot of these units do have the tendency to fall down quite a bit, these new units, they are very good at getting back up and very deadly. The axe unit makes some spooky sounds and is a very fun addition. Next we have perhaps my favorite of the three units, the Spinning Mace. I'm not sure how cost effective this unit is, but it is a very fun and interesting unit. Kind of derpy the way it spins around, um, but I still think it's uh, really enjoyable. The metal chest plate and spinning aspects make it very similar to the flail unit that uh, was unveiled quite a while ago. I didn't actually put that in my video because I thought the medieval faction was complete. However, it looks like we are going to be getting something similar to this because this unit is very fun. While not very good against the uh, higher health single units such as kings or jarls, I found that the spinning mace unit is very good when going up against large formations of enemies. It's good at uh, disrupting them, and while it doesn't do very much damage, it can do a lot of destruction over time. A couple things to note about this unit. One is I think it's very interesting that comparing this to the squire, they look somewhat similar. However, this unit has a full metal chest plate and a sugar loaf home rather than a flat home. It also has maces, which are weapons more typically associated with the later medieval periods, when armor was um, more able to protect the knight and less at risk from damage of pointed weapons such as swords, which allowed weapons like maces, which could deal a lot more blunt force trauma, to become more prominent. It's very cool to see a somewhat later period knight, as well as a somewhat earlier period knight, and a more fantasy-esque knight, which is the actual knight unit. Either way, I think that the spinning mace knight might be the weakest of the three, but I still think it is a great unit. However, it does, um, interestingly enough, show off the fact that now factions can technically have more than seven units. While these new units are in their own special bar, the unlocked units bar, um, making it most likely that there will be seven of them, the executioner and the spinning mace unit can both be found on medieval maps and are both most closely linked to the medieval faction, even though those already have seven units. And I think there's a good chance we're going to be getting more of these secret units. I think we'll probably be getting at least one more with the Dynasty. But it opens up the possibility of factions having more than seven units, just not all of them being together at once. The third unit is by far and away the most powerful. Expanding the Greek pantheon, it is the archer goddess Artemis. She wields two bows and fires arrows like a shotgun. A massive clump of arrows fires potentially more than once every second or so and can take out a huge swath of unshielded enemies, but even enemies with shields will get knocked back and destroyed by repetitive fire. Although the, um, the spinning mace unit is only 500 gold, the uh, Artemis unit is over 5,000, 5,300, I believe. But it more than weight makes up for its worth. It is an incredibly deadly unit. I put numerous kings against just two Artemises, and they shredded them. The only weaknesses of this unit seem to be fast moving units such as the uh, wheelbarrow or potentially the berserker if it gets close enough. But this unit is uh, incredible at mowing down huge formations and doing high amounts of damage. If you can split up an enemy or outmaneuver them, you can almost certainly take them down with relative ease. This isn't like Zeus who does a lot of damage but gets overrun very quickly. Artemis is very good at holding her ground and definitely one of the most powerful, if not the most powerful units in the game. Anyway, that's about all that we uh, have in tabs now, and uh, I will most likely be making a video on the Dynasty Faction as it will be coming out later this month. I'm very excited to see all of the new things from Landfall, and I think it's kind of cool that it looks like some of my speculations weren't correct at all. <laughs> but that means that there's new stuff that I get to discover, which isn't things that I'd predicted. It's always cool to see all the surprises that Landfall has in